Chelsea Davies affectionate nickname for Prince Harry exposed. Prince Harry was affectionately given another name by his long-term ex-girlfriend Chelsea Davy which played on one of his most eye-catching traits, according to an unearthed report. Harry may now be preparing for life outside of the royal family with his wife Meghan Markle and their young son Archie, but he did have another very serious relationship before meeting the American actor. Harry dated Chelsea Davy for seven years, in an on-off relationship which many believed would end in marriage. However, Ms. Davy struggled with the attention that came with dating a member of the royal family and so called their romance off several years ago. The pair are said to still be good friends and Ms. Davy even attended his wedding to Meghan in May 2018. During their years as an item, Ms. Davy came to give her former beau a nickname Dash Big Ginger. Writing in the Mirror in 2007, reporter Victoria Ward revealed how Harry said the thing he gets ribbed about most is being ginger although it was used lovingly by his ex. She continued, Girlfriend Chelsea Davy, 21, fondly calls the prince Big Ginger. Meghan too has given Harry a nickname, but hers does not reference his vibrant hair color. During the October ITV documentary Harry and Meghan, An African Journey, Meghan revealed, I've said for a long time to H, that's what I call him, it's not enough to just survive something, right? That's not the point of life. You've got to thrive, you've got to feel happy. Meghan and Harry used the shocking documentary to reveal their unhappiness with the intense scrutiny that comes with being part of the royal family. This was the first major indication that the couple would decide to leave their royal duties behind, in the pursuit of a more ordinary life. As a leaked hoax phone call revealed earlier this week, when Harry believed that he was speaking to climate activist Greta Thunberg rather than two Russian YouTube pranksters, the Duke of Sussex revealed, I was in the military for 10 years, so I'm more normal than my family would like to believe. However, Harry's ginger hair did not go unnoticed in the army either. Harry's friends allegedly nicknamed him the Ginger Bullet Magnet during his stint in the military. The Sun even reported in 2007 that his army friends bought ginger wigs to wear in Iraq. They joked that if Harry had been posted there he would have been easy to identify by the enemy and by wearing ginger wigs they would confuse their opponents. In a U.S. TV interview from the same year, Harry revealed that his mother Princess Diana used to call him Ginger too. She is also thought to have called him Good King Harry Dash or GKH, subtly implying that she thought he would make a great monarch. She thought he would be better equipped for the role in the future than William according to royal expert Robert Jobson in 2019 Channel 5 program, William and Harry, Princes at War. Harry's 10-month-old son Archie has also been seen with ginger hair, although Harry once revealed that his son had no hair for the first five months of his life, making it impossible to tell if he had inherited his father's fiery locks. Although not many of Harry's direct royal relatives are ginger themselves, a throwback image of Prince Philip at the age of 36 reveals he too grew a ginger beard in his youth. Donning the front cover of the French magazine Paris Match from 1957, Harry's grandfather can be seen smiling in his military uniform with a full red beard. Red hair is also a trait within the Spencer family, Diana's younger brother Earl Charles Spencer and elder sister Lady Sarah Spencer have reddish hair. Shock Royal Claim, How Meghan and Harry Committed Greatest British Sin Meghan Markle and Prince Harry committed the greatest British sin when they outlined their initial plan for life outside of the royal family, according to The Atlantic commentator Tom McDaig. Meghan and Harry stunned royal fans all over the world when they decided to step down as senior royals back in January. The two claimed they wanted to pursue a progressive new role within the royal institution, meaning they would maintain their titles, properties and patronages while being financially independent. However, the Queen put her foot down and told the couple if they choose to leave the firm, they would have to renounce most of the privileges too. Since then, there seems to have been an acrimonious back and forth between Buckingham Palace and the Sussex household over the boundaries of their new status, evident in the statements released by both offices. Writing for The Atlantic in January, Tom McTague pointed out that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex faced accusations of hypocrisy by pursuing this progressive new role and still holding on to the benefits of the royal family. He explained, 
it doesn't take a royal criminologist to work out that you can't step back from your duties and fully support the person in charge of doling out those duties, or retain the privileges of a constitutionally a political institution and promote causes that stray into politics. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have emphasized that they will be pursuing cause-driven activities once they leave the royal family such as mental health and climate change action, which are often seen as political matters. Mr. McTagg continued, Harry and Meghan are easy to sympathize with. Who isn't in favor of having cake and eating it, too? In politics, after all, everyone is a cakeist, no one wants to pay more tax, but everyone wants better services. But just because everyone is a hypocrite doesn't make hypocrisy a virtue. And like many vices, hypocrisy is often expensive, which means lots of people can't afford it. Most, for instance, don't have the money to fly on a private jet, therefore they're unlikely to become a climate change activist and a frequent luxury flyer, as Harry and Meghan stand accused of. The couple were widely criticized for their frequency of private jets over the summer. Additionally, when they announced they intended to split their time between North America and the UK, many royal watchers pointed out that this undermined their whole environmental stance. He pointed out that their titles themselves, as Duke and Duchess of Sussex, were not reflective of the progressive figureheads they aspired to be. Mr. McTigg explained, remember, that institution is monarchy, the system of inheriting authority as well as a whole range of other titles, wealth, land and property. Harry is a Duke and Meghan a Duchess, not your classic progressive positions. He pointed out that it seems problematic for the two of them to keep hold of their aristocratic titles but step back from the responsibility that comes with such a role. However, since this article was written, Harry has openly asked to be called just Harry in public. The two have also attended all of their final royal engagements and are believed to have returned to Canada. Additionally, Harry has been stripped of his military appointments and neither can use their HRH titles. They will still be funded by Prince Charles Duchy of Cornwall Estate for the next year or two. Still Mr. McTigg pointed out how difficult it is for the couple to support the causes they want while still clinging to the royal institution, which is supposed to be completely apolitical. Harry humiliated himself recently when he took two separate hoax phone calls from two Russian YouTube stars and believing activist Greta Thunberg to be on the other end of the line, poured criticism on U.S. President Donald Trump and his inaction on climate change. As ITV presenter Lorraine Kelly said earlier this week, the pranksters made a right fool out of the royal by tricking him and getting him to discuss politics. Mr. McTigg continued, Harry and Meghan's popularity is, in part, tied to this unifying neutrality. Choosing to intervene politically might give them a quick hit of satisfaction but erodes the basis of their popularity. Once they start to behave like ordinary people, giving ordinary opinions, then people will treat them as ordinary. Yet, the Queen seems to have taken this into consideration. She has stopped the two of them from using their HRH titles, although they may retain them, and has banned them from using their trademark of Sussex Royal. This has subsequently pushed them away from the royal institution and any charges of hypocrisy. As Mr. McTigg pointed out, in Britain, hypocrisy is the killer charge, the worst sin of all.